back and today we are going to look at decoding the periodic table. So if we remember, our periodic table is arranged with those little tiles throughout and it has columns and rows. We actually call those groups and periods. Can you do that with me? Groups and periods. Exactly. Our groups go up and down and our periods go across. So our groups are vertical and our periods are horizontal. So let's take a closer look. So taking a look at this periodic table, the periods are color coded, so each period is a different color. You'll also notice to the left, you see those circles. So if you find period one, they're labeled on the side, number one has how many rings around it? One. That's because everything in period one has one energy level or one ring around its atom. Now, if you go down to period two, how many rings or energy levels does period two have? Exactly, it has two. So keep going down, you'll notice they add one ring as the periods get larger. So all the way up to period seven. Now period seven, you'll notice has seven rings. It is also the largest period. So you can also take a closer look at the mass of those atoms and notice that they also get bigger as you go down the periodic table. So now on this periodic table, you notice that the groups are labeled. Our groups go up and down and then they are labeled at the top. So if you notice, there is a top number and there's a number underneath it with an A next to it. The top number tells us our group number. So the first column is group one. And then the next column is group two. So if you notice, this periodic table also has numbers on it. That's because our groups also tell us the number of valence electrons. So our valence electrons, if you don't remember, I always say valence electrons because they are on the outermost ring. So our group one has how many valence electrons? One, exactly. So group two has two valence electrons. Now, if you notice the middle is crossed out, that's because our transition metals don't always follow these rules. So we're gonna skip those for now. Going over to group 13. If you look closely, it's group 13 and right underneath that it has three A. That A number tells us the number of valence electrons. So group 13 has how many valence electrons? Exactly, three. So that's how we can tell our groups with the number of valence electrons. Okay, so now let's try to take a look at our regular periodic table and try to use our groups and our periods to find an element. So if I asked which element has two energy levels and five valence electrons, what element would that be? So here's a hint. You would want to find the period number with the energy levels on the left-hand side. So find that number. We're looking for two. And then at the top, you're going to find the number of valence electrons, and I'm looking for five. So two going across, period two, and group 15, because that has 5A, which is five valence electrons. So then you're going to go across and over to find that element. So which element has two energy levels and five valence electrons? Did you find it? Nitrogen, good job. Let's take a look at one more. Okay, so now the next one is four energy levels and eight valence electrons. How are we gonna find it? Period four on the side and eight valence electrons is group 18. Again, find those two numbers. Go to that element. What element is it? Dun, dun, dun. Krypton, good job. Okay, now let's talk about our reactivity. Reactivity of an atom depends on how reactive it's gonna be when mixed with something else. For example, our highly reactive atoms would even make an explosion just by adding it to water. Crazy, right? So looking at this periodic table, it shows us our reactivity 
based on our groups. That's right, our groups tell us our reactivity. So our groups also tell us our valence electrons. So our valence electrons determine our reactivity. Can you say that with me? Valence electrons determine reactivity. Okay, let's take a closer look. If you notice, our stable or non-reactive group is group what? Can you see that number at the top? Group 18. And how many valence electrons does group 18 have? Exactly, eight. That means it's in its happy place. It's chill, it's stable, it's hanging out because it doesn't need anybody else. It doesn't want to react with anyone else because it has a full outer shell, which means eight valence electrons. So what about those highly reactive groups? If you notice, those are groups one and 17. Those are highly reactive because they're so close to being to eight. So group 17 just wants to grab, reach out and grab one more valence electron to make it a full shell. Group one has one valence electron. That means it can get rid of that one and on the next shell it would be full. So they're both highly reactive because they are so close to getting to that happy place. So our highly reactive groups are going to be groups one and 17. What are our highly reactive groups? One and 17, exactly. So if I asked which group is our highly reactive metals? Uh-oh, I went back to metals. Yes, our metals are on the left-hand side. So which group would that be as highly reactive? Group one. Now, which group is our highly reactive non-metals? Exactly, group 17. So that's something that you want to remember. Also, if you notice on this picture, we have an orange groups. Those are labeled as reactive. They still want to react and get to that happy place of a full valence electron shell, but they're not as reactive as our one and 17. Okay, so let's recap. Our groups go up and down, and what does that tell us again? The number of valence electrons. We also call our groups families. That's because just like your family, families or our groups have similar characteristics or our reactivity. So remember, our groups tell us our valence electrons, which determine what? Our reactivity. So groups, valence electrons, reactivity. Can you do that with me? Groups, valence electrons, and reactivity. Our reactivity determines if they're chill or cray cray. Remember, those numbers are at the top. So the first number is the group, and the number underneath that tells us our valence electrons. Next, we have our rows, or what we call our periods. Our periods tells us the number of shells or energy levels around the atoms, or we also call those rings. So our periods tell us the number of energy levels. Can you say that with me? Periods tell us energy levels. Good job. Well, I hope you enjoyed this decoding of the periodic table, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.